So this is probably one of the more hypothetical videos I do, especially towards the end. But I wanted to start a conversation on the battery system for the Lightning Rods bike and see what people think. The first part of this video will look at my current options, as well as off-the-shelf options you can use for an indoor frame. But before we get into that, Mike from Lightning Rods has sent me some pictures of the drive he's making for the bike for me to show. It's really starting to take shape. Mike is going to be moving on to the jack shaft parts next. We're also looking at quotes to get the through axle chain tensioner manufactured. And it's going to take a little bit longer than I was thinking. So for this first bike, we've made the decision to use the existing tensioning system so that the building of the bike can move forward more quickly. The tensioner that I've come up with can always be used on another swing arm down the road. The focus on this video though is on the battery system that will be powering the bike. As it stands, I already have two battery options that will work well for testing purposes as the bike build comes together. I have a 72 volt LiPo pack that uses these ridiculously overpowered and overspec graphene cells. They have a really wicked punch, but in terms of the size and weight and capacity, they're not really the smartest choice. But they do hold a balance extremely well, and I've only had to balance charge these cells maybe once or twice since owning them, and that's running them mostly without a BMS. The second option that I have is a 21 amp hour triangle pack from Lightspeed Bikes. And it looks a little bit like this one here, but I didn't really want to pull the one off my fat bike because it's really nicely mounted with lots of padding and stuff, so I, I don't want to take it off. But it looks very much like this triangle pack here, and you can fit it inside of the frame quite easily. And there's lots of room for it. I can put padding on, and I could use the 72 volt 21 amp hour pack already. And that will be fine. One of the easiest options though is probably to use the battery box that you can buy direct from Illegal Vector. And there's a guy on my Discord called Rio Cole and he's making packs with this case and having him put together a battery for this build is very much a consideration. You can see lots of pictures of his work on the channel Discord. He's got a lot of experience with the Endora frames, both the Quilbix and Elite Vector style that I'm using. He's one of these people with a really good eye for detail, organization and clean work, which is really what you want with a good battery builder. He's also a very active member of the Discord and is a good guy to chat to about this style of bike build, having built multiple units himself. It's great to have lots of options on the battery ready to go, but I do also have a few ideas for a more experimental battery system with a modular design. So I'll talk a bit about that next. The basic idea would involve having the BMS of the battery in a separate unit and then having several blocks of cells that plug into the BMS for balancing charge and discharge. I think that a modular system has potential advantages in that a person could later upgrade by adding in more capacity at a later time or run their bike in a lighter or heavier configuration depending on personal requirements. A lot of the ideas here come from when I was thinking about ways to split a battery either side of a downhill bike frame. These frames are very compact in the triangle area and people do all sorts of things like putting the battery on top or underneath, which is fine, but I thought it would be really cool if you could split the pack in two and have the battery distributed on both sides of the frame with as compact a form factor as possible. So the general idea is to have metal brackets either side of the frame to support two sections of batteries. From each battery section you would have a plug exiting for the balance leads and the positive and negative discharge. These would plug into a unit with the BMS. From this unit would be a port then to charge and a port to discharge. For the battery for the Endura build it would be a similar thing. The way I'm looking to do it is to widen the battery compartment with spaces at the side and this would essentially allow for two banks of cells to be slotted inside of the frame. The separate BMS unit could then be located in the back of the frame here, which would have easy access from the controller, from the motor. The idea is that a rider that only needs or wants a 30 amp hour battery could then save on weight and cost, but then also easily plug in an additional battery and then double their range at a later date. 
Now, obviously, this is all very concept at this stage. And if people have questions or ideas, please get in touch. This is one of the, like, the longer term aspects of the build, but I thought it would add another layer of flexibility to the design. Thank you very much for watching and subscribing to the channel. Um, the words and comments from you about this system and all the other videos I do mean a lot to me. Next video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the plans that I have for the bike seat. And also, you're gonna find out why I asked Vector to send the bike with the bicycle style mount, even though I'm basically making a motorcycle. Thanks a lot. Cheers.